Hi, and welcome to Home Tech Adventure, where we help you select, buy, build, use, maintain your computers and related equipment in your home. Do you have questions about motherboard sizes and need a bit more information to help you select the right one for you? Motherboard size details coming up. The most common motherboard size that you're going to see is the ATX motherboard. This is 244 by 305 millimeters or 9.6 inches by 12 inches. There's a smaller variation on this called the micro, micro ATX motherboard. It is 244 millimeters wide, just like the ATX, but also 244 millimeters long, so it is square. Micro ATX is usually written without the dash, sometimes written with the Greek letter mu, and sometimes written with a small letter M, all meaning micro ATX. The mini ITX motherboard is even smaller. It is 170 millimeters by 170 millimeters, or 6.7 inches by 6.7 inches. These are the three that you will most likely see most often. You would normally buy one of these three if you're building a computer on a mainstream platform. Oh, wait a minute. Red, green, blue, are all motherboards RGB? Uh, no, wait, that's not the right question for this video. The question is, are all motherboards these sizes? No, they vary a lot. And in fact, there are custom sizes done by manufacturers, especially big ones like HP, Dell, and Apple for particular computers on occasion, even towers on occasion, they do uh, particular sizes for that. But here are the other three sizes that you might encounter if you're buying a motherboard on your own. Extended ATX motherboards are wider, 272 millimeters plus. That means that it varies, but 277 millimeters or, or 72 millimeters or more, 305 millimeters in length, just like the ATX standard. So these vary a little bit. They are all wider than the ATX standard, but the amount wider does vary a little bit depending on the manufacturer, the extended ATX motherboard. Mini DTX has come to the fore recently. There is a one motherboard that I know of that's available right now on the mainstream platform, 170 millimeters by 203 millimeters or 6.7 by 8 inches. Mini DTX is usually written with the dash. You can see that it is actually exactly the same width as the Mini ITX motherboard, but it's just slightly longer in length to allow for a few extra features. So that's the Mini DTX. If you really look for a small build, you might see this form factor called the Mini SFX, written with the dash, 144, 140 millimeters by 147 millimeters, or 5.5 by 5.8 inches. Unlikely to see this, but it might be if you're looking for a really, really small build. Keep in mind that actual motherboards may vary from this specification slightly. They are almost always the same length, but the width can vary. Here is an actual ATX motherboard that is narrower than the spec. Manufacturers probably do this to save money as margins on motherboards tend to be very slim. If you see a review that complains that an ATX motherboard barely fits in a particular case, and another review that says that it fits just fine, it's probably due to the variation in the width of the particular motherboards that they're talking about. Here's another look on some variations. Micro ATX motherboard, definitely smaller than the actual spec. Micro ATX motherboard, even smaller than the other one that's smaller than the actual spec. So this one is, is much smaller. If I put it on here so you can see it with just the green background, you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the other motherboard. So these motherboard sizes do vary. Why would you buy a particular motherboard size? Well, it's really a personal choice, but I'll give you some tips and ideas to help get you started. But first, could you please like this video? Perhaps you can share it with somebody who also would like this type of content. Write some comments down below. What have I missed? What types of things do you look for when buying a motherboard? What's most important to you? Also, if you really like this content, please subscribe so that I can continue making these videos. The Mini SFX motherboard size is only used in very small builds like the ones in the desk, uh, ASRock Desk Mini and other very, very small computers. You can see that the motherboard in here is very, very tiny. So generally only used when you need a really, really small build. Extended ATX motherboards are not as common as they once were. They're generally still available for the common CPU sizes. 
Where you really see more extended ATX motherboards is in the high-end desktop platforms, or HEDT. That would be like the AMD Threadripper or the Intel Core i9 processors. Generally, manufacturers do this so that they can more easily include up to eight RAM slots. ATX is somewhat of a default motherboard size. It is large enough to allow for four RAM slots and many PCIe expansion slots. Since it is so popular, there are many variations of features and prices available in this size. Micro ATX motherboards are a good choice for small builds. Often, they allow many PCIe expansion slots and sometimes up to four RAM slots. Not always though. If we look at this smaller ATX motherboard, it has only one major PCIe expansion slot with two smaller ones, and it only has two RAM slots. Many ITX motherboards are very small form factor. They are limited to one PCIe slot and usually two RAM slots. That's because of the small size. There's still a good choice if you want a really small build, however, even better than the Mini SFX that we saw earlier because they do allow for a full-size graphics card. This is the smallest size available that allows for a full-size graphics card. Mini DTX is also a good form factor for very small builds. Since it's slightly longer than a Mini ITX motherboard, it allows for additional features. As of the filming of this video, I only know of one Mini DTX motherboard that's suitable for the current processor lineup. That motherboard from, is from ASUS and is very feature-packed, but also has a price to match its features. I really hope that Mini DTX becomes more popular in the future because I really think it is a good compromise between the small size and features. Whatever motherboard you buy, make sure it fits in the case that you plan to use. Remember that the size of the motherboard varies even within the particular size range. While you can usually put a small motherboard, like a mini ITX motherboard, into a very large case, they often do accommodate them, why would you? If you're going to buy a teeny little motherboard, well, put it in a teeny little case, or at least a slightly smaller case. Don't buy a giant case and put a teeny tiny motherboard in it. Why, why would you buy the smaller motherboard then? Just get an ATX motherboard and fill it up with a couple of extra features. Thanks for watching this video, and why don't you continue watching? Here's another video for you that you can watch and continue on your home tech adventure. And remember, have fun on your own home tech adventure.